let us find the pressure exerted by the liquid on the side of the body. Let's say we have a solid body immersed completely in a liquid. Let us just get rid of these lines. We have, let's say, this. Let us consider this face. This is basically the side face of the body. This is immersed in this fashion, in a container containing a liquid. We have expanded this view. We have zoomed it here for getting more clear with our calculations. What our job is, our job is to find the pressure on the side face of the body or calculate the net force or the force applied by the pressure on this side face. For that, let's say we consider a thin section of width, say dx. Let's say this is at a depth of x from the top face of this body. And let's say this body is immersed in this liquid by a depth of h1. Say this height of the body is capital H. Again assuming a constant cross-sectional area denoted by let's say CSA being equal to A. We will also require this width of the body in our calculations. So let's define that width by let's say w. The pressure acting on this small element which is at a depth of h1 plus x, let us write this here too, which is acting at h1 plus x depth is going to be pressure at the depth of h1 plus x is the rho of the liquid, say the liquid has the density of rho times h1 plus x into g along with the atmospheric pressure. The force acting on this element due to this pressure is PATM plus rho times H1 plus X into G, entire thing multiplied by this area. This area is going to be this width and this small width of DX, which is W times dx. For us to find out the net force acting in the entire surface, we have to integrate it by this height. We have to integrate this over this height h, capital H of this body. So the net force due to pressure is going to be the integral of this quantity. We have to integrate it from this point to this point. At this point, considering our origin is somewhere 
on the surface of the liquid, we will integrate it from the depth h1, which is from here, to here, which is h1 plus capital H. W being constant, we can take this out. And after integrating this, we have W times capital H multiplied by the PATM plus rho into G into H1 plus capital H by 2. This integral being very trivial is not solved in detail here, but if you integrate, we can directly see that P ATMs time W dx will be converted to H1 plus H minus H1, which is going to be W times H. This quantity gets converted to H1 times the G into W because there is nothing outside, we have only capital H. This x gets integrated to x square by 2, which on solving gives us this. This quantity is the net force acting on this face. If we watch closely, P atm plus rho g h1 is the pressure acting at this depth and rho g h by 2 is the pressure which is acting halfway the face. This quantity is known as the average pressure exerted by the liquid on the side face. We have to state here that we have considered the cross-sectional area of the body being constant and the width being constant. Had the width been changing along it, which is implying the cross-sectional area of this body being changing, we will not have this kind of a situation. We might have something else, but provided the cross-sectional area is constant, we can say that this holds and this being the average pressure or the pressure acting halfway down this height. So the net force acting on this face can be directly written as pressure due to this column of the fluid, which is rho g h1 plus the atmospheric pressure plus rho g into h by 2. This can be written directly. 